Hi there, this is Tony Teolis of todolisthome.com. Today is uh, September 6, 2013. I'm going to show you what I do to take care of the bees' water needs around here. And right now we just have this top bar hive going on. It's the Thrive Hive. They've got problems though of their own. There's a Varroa situation going on here. I'm not sure how bad it is. Um, but I'm trying to take care of them as best as I can. I'm monitoring it. And uh, I could be at the threshold for excessive treatment like thymol. I'm um, trying to avoid that right now. And uh, we'll go ahead and check the hive again tomorrow. I want to show you the, the meantime, things that I do here to get the bees the water that they need. I'm sure there's plenty the around. One thing I have going on right now is a soaker hose soaking in where, I get in the, where I'm getting the uh, ground ready for the garlic and onions. And the radish, the big Japanese daikon radish. And you see here the buckwheat's already coming up. I'm trying to sprout up some buckwheat so I can turn that into the soil and make it better. So there's water coming out here right now. And look, you can even see some uh, honeybees uh, coming in and out of here getting a drink. main attraction I want to point out here is just this cheap homemade bird bath. I originally made it for birds, but as you can see, the bees love coming up in here for a drink as well. This is the Echo 185 submersible pump. $15 off of Amazon.com. I've been using this pump inside this five gallon bucket, which is only two bucks from Home Depot, and some extra hose that I purchased on Amazon. A cheap old plant basin, just some rocks, and a stick stuck into the hose coming out to control the flow. And I have had myself here a bird bath, but actually this has become the bee watering hole over the past six months. Is that right? Six months, yeah. This pump's been going great. I don't use it every day and I don't use it 24 hours a day. But whenever I get the chance, I plug it in and uh, let it run. And you'll see how I maintain it after time. And you'll see all the bees coming in here to enjoy this. Yeah, you see I got it just like I want it right now. It's bouncing off the rock and not being too disruptive for the bees. And this last system here is uh, even a little cruder. This is my rain barrel attached to downspout with the runoff there. But we've had a lot of rain and everything lately, um, except for this past week. It's just pretty dry this week. So what I want to do is just get a little drip going on here down this metal pan and I'll throw a rock or something in here to uh, help balance uh, balance it out. Let's now, see. Now the bees need water for a number of reasons. Just like just like people need water, bees need water too. Everything in life needs water, and the bees will go ahead and use the water to help. You know, they'll store it to help cool the hive when necessary. They'll go ahead and fan around the hive and. It'll do so in a, in a manner that'll help keep the hive a little cooler during the hot days, like it may get a little warm today and they'll have to And cool having the, the bees off. find their local source here on my yard, and you can see I've got three and if not more different sources where the bees can go around and find water here. That keeps them from going to my neighbor's yard or anybody else's yard and um, trying to find water there, especially somebody's pool. That wouldn't be uh, too cool of a thing. So. One of the things that's necessary to help maintain the bees is to maintain a water supply for them as well. Okay, that's your beekeeping tip for the day. See you around next time.